Hello guys, and I'm going to be showing you how to disassemble your Holley carburetor. This, what we got here, is a Holley 600, and it's got power valve bad in it. If you watched the Trans Am video of us trying to start it, it's popping and cracking no matter what you adjusted. And yeah, it's power valve. So we're just going to rebuild the whole thing. Danny thought it was his new cool way that it set. We figured it might gel up a little bit. The power valve probably went bad. But turns out, no, this is just one he had. And his new one was on his Impala. I mm, guess you get confused kind of easy. So, let's tear this thing down. Okay, this is the carburetor. Now we need the first thing we need to do is either way you want to, it's going to have gas in it, so lay your trash bag down and expect that. Well, if it's set one time, it might not have gas in it, but yeah, this one has gas in it. Which I know. Knew it would. And as it drains, we catch it. That's what trash bag for. And we will pretty much change the trash bag. After we get it disassembled, put us a fresh trash bag down. Nobody smoke right now. We dilly dagging around. Okay. I need a four way handy bossy. Thank you. Three, and you want to make sure your washers come off with your bolts because you will be reusing these bolts. No ifs, buts about it. Right here. And here. Now, next thing you want to do is take your clip off, which is right here. And once you get everything out, it should come right up, no problem. You got another clip on the other side too you need to take out. But. It's more of a C-clip. Needle nose pliers helps out a lot with that. Once you get the little clip out, I don't know if you can see it, weigh it to the side with your bolts. And that makes this part come out right here. It's always nice way that can gas. Okay, once you get that, that pretty much undoes these. So you don't lose it, put that to the side too. Now, check for bolts. Once you got all the bolts out, I need one way. Once you get your bolts out, it should pile up. It might be a little stubborn, but it should come right up. Especially if it ain't been apart, the gasket will stick to it. Once you get it apart, that's the old gasket. You need to clean this off. If you can, keep your old gasket before, you know, so you can match it up with another gasket because sometimes there are different holes in different places and whatnot. You want to match your gasket up first and then move on. 
before you take it off. So however you want to do it, prefer to do it. Once you get that, you set it to the side. Now the next thing we want to do is take off a choke. There's three bolts on it. One here, one here, one here. This car that this is going on I'm pretty sure we won't be using the choke anymore so I might not put it back on this because we are using a 700, uh, not 700 R4 but a 4L60E behind it and the point of using the 4L60E is that it's a computer controlled and you go run a throttle positioning sensor Howie makes one that goes right in the place of this choke right here. Which means we won't have to install this again. Who needs a choke anyway? Just pump your gas more. They just say we definitely need to put the new gasket on it of this if we got it. How come? Because they are still come down in that hole. Which ain't never a good sign. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. There we go. Take your three bolts off for of the choke. And there's a little clip behind it. Take your one way or needle noses, either one, and pull it off. That's the clip. Once you get that off, that will come right off. Might be a little pain to get off, which will stiff, but it'll come right off. Not hardly any trouble at all. Once you get that off, you can pretty much put your choke back together. Uh, you want to make sure this goes in this. That's your tension spring. Once you get that, put your three bolts. Come out of it, back in it, so you can keep up with everything, because you don't want to lose it. Especially if you will use it.
Okay, that was a choke. We can set it to the side now. Okay. Next to be a, uh, I call it a vacuum, second vacuum. Same thing, three bolts. Bolt one in tight. Don't supposed to be super tight, but you don't supposed to be loose either. You don't supposed to be pretty much you can do that. No force at all. Let's feel a little bit of tension. Oh, I'm just wait right here what everything is. Now we've got everything on this part. Next, let's take a bolts, which is right here. Give me a nut driver. Probably a 5 sixteenths. I want this corporator with mine. Watch this. Look here. I mean, watch it, people. Watch. Was it leaking, people? No, it wasn't leaking. I don't see how it wasn't leaking. I don't see how it sealed off all the holes like it should, neither. Ugh. It ain't the worst I've seen, but it's been rebuilt before. Y'all can tell. That's what I think is bad. Power valve. It's been rebuilt a long time ago and never used. See if this will bring us really. Really. That's this symbol. It's cold with my bare fingers. stuck. There we go. That's power valve. That's what's bad on it. I'm about positive without even having to check it. Try to get this gasket off in one piece. Last cleaning we got to do. Now we need to match the gasket up with this one. Make sure everything on it is not never covered because we don't want to block no holes up. Okay. All right, Bossy matches one out of four gaskets. Up with that one, which you know it's probably easy done. Which, the idea is first try. That gasket right on. Because I got more gaskets too. I 
as you can see, it's got the extra hole at the this and down. This and had the hole too, like that. So actually, we won't be using this one in a kit. We can put that to the side. We will be using this with a kit. So we will weigh that in the used part. This old gasket you can throw away. Now we move to the other side. Ah, you see the worst come out of that? I don't know if you got it a camera or not. Oh god, hold on. I wonder if Danny got this off a duck track basically. Remember the last one I took a pot was full of sand. Like half the track was in the cord. Ew. No, Danny, your cobweb is in great shape. I need to go get my little kit out of my drawer, bus. You don't care. Oh, gosh. <coughs> then, while we got everything off, we want to clean it good. When we clean it good, we're going to boil it out with compressed air. But first thing we're going to do is soak it in the cleanup. Yeah, that's the first thing we're going to do is soak it. Now, let's see if I can go the old trick or woo of taking these out without having the actual tool. I doubt I'm going to with this kit. I was hoping I would, but... Uh. I can. It's not even tight. What? Some's tight, some's not. Now, 
same thing as before. You want to keep up with this. And match it up with the other one. But just don't go on this because I could have it mixed up well. Especially if they more come in the kit. Okay, that's the one we're going to go with. That can be thrown away. Yeah, it's little cool waiters. We built once upon a time. And you can tell look how smooth that is. And they've cleaned that up real nice. Saves me half my work. Okay, guys. Now, the next part is me dipping all these parts we took apart and finished disassembling. That's all I'm going to show you because I got to dip these and here take some time. But I will show you the can of dip. Is it in here, boss? Right here? No, sir. Now, when you dip your parts, you want to use this cool water parts cleaner. It comes with a water tray and everything. Don't dip nothing plastic. When you do your float bowls, take everything out of them. Clean them good. Same goes for everything else. If you dip your base bottom base plate, complete with this symbol. If it's not leaking, I don't recommend it because the plastic bushings and everything is a pain. So, clean it out with compressed air, brake cleaner, however you want to do it. But that pretty much completes the disassembly of a holly. I hope you enjoyed this part and I'll see you here in a little bit. Okay, what you want to do next is assemble your metering block. What you want to do is get your new power valve that came in the kit. Here's a new power valve. Gasket. Put the gasket on your power valve. And before you assemble this metering block, Put it in your dip, clean it good, then bore out each hole with your air nozzle. Compressed air helps these out a lot. Take your new power valve and make sure your gasket is centered on it. Because the last thing you want is a bad seal. That goes, gasket centered as you, well, you didn't see in the video. See how the gasket's sitting on it? If it's camera focus. Like that. Then you want to hand snug it and take you a uh, channel box or whatever you use in the ranch and just very snug it. Not too tight. And as you can see, we've got the new power valve jets. You want to clean them out with compressed air. If it don't clean them, hold them up to the light. You can look through them and see how dirty they are and if I need clean you can take a uh, torch tip cleaners and also run through them and clean them these is 69 size jets good old 69 everybody likes 69 take your a one way Snug them, not too tight though, because they will break. I think it's cool, boy. The came stock with 64. Somebody upgraded them to 69. Okay, once you get that, you want to go make sure you snug this up with channel locks. That's what I'm going to do. And uh, pretty much that's how you rebuild your metering block. Now, just a quick tip. You can take your floats and some water, drop it in the water. If it floats and don't sink, it's good because these plastic floats can crack and they will hold gas. And then if they hold gas, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Because they will sink and your car will flood out. It's just a mess. So, you definitely want to make sure your floats are good even the tin floats you know they can go bad too but if they go bad you can pretty much sort of them and quick fix them these plastic ones 
Actually, truth be told, I prefer the 10 over the basket. But that's a quick tip, just in case you didn't know. Okay, guys, let's assemble the fork bowls. First, you want to make sure you get the right side. This is your front bowl with the power cell right there that goes here. This goes in here, like so. Once you get that, next step, let's go ahead and put a little nipple in. The little thing I call a nipple is this. It lets fuel go in one way and not the other. It goes in and you gotta wiggle it and mash it in. Most of the time, you have to pull on it. Right there, if this camera will show you. The best thing to pull on it with is needle nose. So, try to get in video here. You want to be gentle too and not tear it because it will break. And as you can see, right there, it's in. Once you get that, you need the spring. You put your spring in, like so. You can take your new diaphragm. This is the old one, right here. You can tell it's cool, but it's been rebuilt once before. Never mind, this is the old one. My bad, people. My bad. This is a new one. But as you can see, this one has been rebuilt once upon a time. We will take a new one, which is ten times better than the one we had. You want to put it on a lot like so. Next, you want your cover for it, which is right here. As you can see, it'll go one way. Well, it go on several ways, but it goes on just like so. So when you hit the gas, you know, it works at right now. So I'm going to throw the bolts back in this, then we go to the uh, float bolts. Okay, next thing you want to do is put your floats in. Make sure your spring is on it. Once you get the spring, you can take and insert your float like so. Make sure your spring sits in there good. And it should be just like this. As you can see, like that. Next thing you want to do is take this section, start it in, like so. As you start it in, you need to take your thing off. To adjust it because you're gonna need to adjust this power rail to the bow which as you can see is nowhere near power rail so let's see if we can get it whoops sorry bad camera I can't look at the camera and And that's pretty well power well to the bow right there. Okay guys, next thing you want to do is put your C clip back on this part. But once you get this, you want to adjust this power well. And as you can see, that is not right. It's still too low, so we're going to bring it up some. Which right there should be close enough. Now we will hold this set screw and tighten this nut. Okay, guys, I'm gonna do as best I can because, like I said, I can't see where the camera is. This right here goes in pretty much one way, right like so. Once you get that, you can take your float. 
and spring, which is right here, and insert it like so. Now, there's a C clip goes on the end of this, which I got new ones in the kit. I'm going to put on it. I'm going to just show you exactly what to do before then. Next, you want to set your bowls parallel. Well, what you want to do to do that, pretty much loosen that set screw. Take and tighten that up. And as you tighten this up, this float will go up. And just keep packing your set screw out. And then set it parallel to it. Once it's parallel, which looks about like that, you can adjust the rest of it if need be on the car, but that's pretty much the setting that you need to be at. Next, you want to find your metal gasket and put right here on that. So I'm going to do that now, and then we go to something else on this corvoider. Okay guys, now let's get a gasket ready and assemble this back part of the corvoider right here. Make sure all your holes line up and you ain't got none blocked off. Now you will want to use this gasket too. This gasket goes on behind this. Like so. You will want to should be right like this. Just like so. Like that we go. It should look just like that. Like that. Okay, next step is taking your crutch bits. That's what possibly used on these, which we use one way. Get away with it. It ain't like it's Super Nintendo and you need like special tools to get into it. You can actually make something work with these. Now you just want to snug these because you do got gasket. I'm going to have to get something to snug them better than what I got here. So, let me snug these on up. Okay, next you want to install your float bolt cover. Here's us. We didn't got it set for well. As you can see in the previous video, you need to take it and put it in like so. Then you want to take your new O-wings and put on your bolts. You got four of them. These are plastic. As soon as I find the nut driver. Check and make sure there ain't no different sizes, which it ain't, and all of them should go in pretty easy. 
without any problems. Okay, we got that side assembled and done. What a pretty holly. Next, we will want a feed tube. Okay, next thing is put your wings on this and feed them in the bowl. Like so. Just like that. Just like that. Once you get that, you can take your bow, which is Bryce's assembled, put it on just like so. Now you four boats, which is here, 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 and here. Make sure you got your uh, seals for your boats on it. And now your boat should start. And screw in easy. Next, we will get the base plate. Sure, you can see this in the video. Okay, what kind of base plate gasket is? Where are we at? Huh. Time. Make sure we get the right ones, because you definitely don't want to mess this up. And that got everything we need. Right there, we found it first try. Took some tries, but we got it. That we did. And double check. Make sure. As you can see. Everything is good. Looks good to me. So we are going to install this base plate now. What you want to do is pretty much the simplest of the simple is make sure you put it on right and when it's on right hit a set down like so and you can give it gas like so and it will work now i'm going to tighten these six bolts up Okay guys, we're back. Now we're going to finish this up. We got the base plate on. Finally, next thing we want to do, can you guess? Anybody? Anybody at all? Let's put the choke on. You got a little clip goes in this. You need to put that in. Because if you don't, there's going to be a pain in your behind. So once you get that, as you can see, 
say it's like so which is pretty neat okay and then you take you probably see my head the little clip that you had right here now this kit does not come with one it does not why it don't come with one I do not know something you have to ask that kid about I guess well anyway and set it down like so. Mm -hmm. Then you can start you some screws. And then you can put your clip on after you get it pretty well set. Okay guys, that's pretty much got the cord board all done. I'm going to show you a quick uh, video of it before I finish up this video. But, uh... Basically, the camera finally died. Yeah, it took us uh, quite some time to get this uh, video done, and we kind of left the camera recording the whole time. So, I apologize for that. Um, but it turned out great. We're going to put it on the Trans Am soon, so it will be a video of that. If you've not seen the Trans Am, it's a fourth gen with an old school 350 in it. You can check out my videos on my channel. And until next time I see you in, so enjoy this uh, video of the cool way to put together.